Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We made it through the weekend. I hope you had a nice weekend. It's Monday morning. It's 7 a.m. in Denver, Colorado, and it's time for another edition of Living Hope Today. We're going to have devotions. God says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. We're going to look into his word this morning. And at first, before we get there, let me just say thank you to you. Uh, we've ended four weeks of Living Hope today, and your response has been so wonderful, and so many people have shared it and liked it, and I think we had something like over 2,000 views in our first month. We're hoping to grow, but praise God for you. Thank you so much for participating and sharing the Word of God with other people. It's really a beautiful thing to see. Anyway, today we're going to look at one of the biggest questions any of us can ever answer. And that's simply this. What happens to you when you die? And if there is a heaven, how do you go there? Uh, you know, we think about these four score and ten years that we have here on this earth as being really important. But in the big scope of things, this is just a little minute piece of our existence. We live for these 60, 70, 80 years if we're lucky and things go well, but then we go on to eternity. And according to the Bible and the prophets and all the things that God has revealed, eternity is going to happen for all of us. We're all going to be somewhere forever. And so let's look at some specific things Jesus says, specifically four ways he contrasts those who are going to be with him forever and those who are not. Look what it says in Matthew 7. This is Jesus preaching in his Sermon on the Mount. And he says, enter by the narrow gate. Enter what? Enter his kingdom. Enter heaven. Enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. So he starts talking about the narrow gate, but immediately he moves to the contrast the narrow gate with the wide gate and the easy way and the path that leads to destruction and the fact that there's many that are going that way. In the next verse he says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. You know, we live in a world where a lot of people will tell you, oh yeah, I'm going to heaven. How do you know that? Well, I'm a nice guy. Or I go to church every Sunday. Or I had one guy one time tell me that uh, he knew he was going to heaven because he joined the Presbyterian church when he was 19. I mean, we can all have our opinions about where we're going and how we're going to get there, but don't you think we need to really try to dig through and find out what God's opinion is because he's the one who decides, right? Uh, and so when Jesus is talking here and he puts these specific contrasts into place, we need to pay close attention. What is he trying to communicate to us? Look at the contrast he's just brought to us. There's one way that's narrow. There's another way that's wide. There's one way that's hard. There's another way that's easy. There's one way that leads to life, and the other way leads to destruction. Ooh. And there's one way that few people find, and there's another way that many people find. Jesus says, look, if you want to follow me and enter my kingdom, the way is narrow. It's going to be hard. There's only a few people that are going to find it, but it does lead to life. And then by contrast, he says, look, if you want to live any way you want and believe that you're going to go to heaven for any reason you want to think is true, you can do that. That's the wide gate. That's the easy way. That's the way that leads to destruction. And unfortunately, according to Jesus in Matthew 7, that's the way many, many people are following. What that tells us is there's going to be a lot of good people, a lot of religious people, a lot of people that went to church, maybe even read their Bibles that are going to get to that judgment throne of God and hear these words, I never knew you. 
So as you face your Monday and as you go through the day to day, just remember these contrasts. God's telling us what? We should expect to be just a few. That that not everybody's going to understand what Jesus said. And if they do understand it, not many people are going to believe it's true. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. We might have to suffer for the cause of Christ as we stand up for what's true in daily life. It, it does lead to life. And again, my... <laughs> My stress today is that you and I live with a focus of what's going to last forever. Not just these 60, 70, or 80 years we're here. And by the grace of God, we want to be part of the few. Part of the few that find it. If you find yourself today on the road where you know you're going to heaven because you're a good person, why did Jesus say these things? If good people could go to heaven, why does Jesus put all these limitations on entering his kingdom? He's trying to tell us something really important. I hope you're listening. He's contrasting the religious, easy, don't worry about it way with the you need to pay attention and follow me way. Remember what he said in John 14? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, Jesus is either crazy, because who says stuff like that? I mean, he's either a liar, like maybe he really knows that that's not true and he's trying to deceive people, or, and the more likely conclusion, maybe he is God, maybe he is born, as the Bible says, through the Virgin Mary to be the Son of God, to die for us. Maybe all the prophets were right when they predicted that he'd be born of a virgin, when they predicted that he'd be born in Bethlehem. Maybe everything about him is true. And when he says, no one comes to the Father except through me, you and I need to pay close, close, close attention. When you deal with your workmates and and your classmates and your friends and the people you might run into today, be sure to lovingly let people know as God gives you utterance that God is real and that his way is narrow. There's a price to be paid. Those who are telling us we should just try to live our best life now are not paying attention to what Jesus said. Jesus said He gave us instruction on how to live our best life now, too. I'm sorry, I said that all wrong, didn't I? Jesus gave us instruction on how to live and walk through the narrow gate and how to be those few, how to to honor him. He said in John 8, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. How do we... No, we're going through that narrow gate. While we confess our sins to God, we ask Jesus to enter our hearts. We believe that he is the Christ. We believe that he has risen from the dead and is alive right now. And then we tie ourselves to his word. Just to know it? No. To do it. To obey it. To to carry out what God wants in our lives. As you go through today... I pray that you'll just keep understanding and refreshing yourself in the truth that God's way is the right way. You might be alone. You might feel isolated. It might not be like anybody else is coming with you. Don't let that bother you. That's exactly what Jesus said. You don't want to be on the wide way. You don't want to be on the easy way. You don't want to head to destruction. You don't want to be part of the many that are just cruising through life without understanding what's going on. You want to be part of the few that know that Jesus is real, that his words do lead to life, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that you follow him. Cement that in your heart, dear one, because today is the day of salvation. Live for him. I know today he will use your life to bring glory to his name. I want to make sure you know that uh, my name is Scott Kalavik, 
and I am a pastor of Living Hope Community Church. Uh, there's a website on your screen right now called Welcome to Living Hope. Dot com. If you want to visit us at Living Hope, all the information is right there on the website with the map and the time and the place and all those things. We'd love to have you come visit us. Also, I want you to be aware that we do have a website called RUA Disciple. This website is built so that we can mature in Christ step by step, lesson by lesson. That's available to you as well. And then please remember always that we will pray for you. If you do have needs or want to submit a praise or we have a team of people that are willing to get on their knees and take your concerns to the throne of grace, if that will help you. I just want to say God bless you today. Again, thank you so much for sharing these things and liking them and promoting them because people are being touched by God's word through your efforts. And I really do want to say thank you for that. Live this day examining your heart. I, every time I read passages like we studied today, it's like God says to me, hey, are you really with me? Are you somebody that's in love with me and walking with me? It's a question we have to ask ourselves all the time. The Bible says, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Pay attention, church. It's a beautiful thing to be loved by God. It's a beautiful thing to have the promise of life. Just know that walking with Jesus is walking the narrow way. Walk with him today. Serve him well. Obey him. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. And God bless you today. I hope it goes really well. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor.